national targets, uh, 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 the, uh, CCI targets, and also FP2330 uh, commitments as well. In this respect, I think we believe that we will be guided by the motto that so uh, if, uh, if it's so be obvious that the targets cannot be achieved, uh, so we should not change the targets, but uh, change our action steps and strategies. And this is we all our partners believe in that. So our targets, the CCI targets, and the commitments and the FP 2030, uh, the future roadmap as well, which will be finalized uh, by October. Uh, and in this respect, also there is one very important thing uh, I wanted to uh, maybe refer to an old, uh, an ancient proverb saying that uh, do the difficult things when they are easy, do the great things when they are small. A journey of thousand miles begins uh, uh, with a single step. Uh, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, UNFPA key, a key message on this World Population Day is that let us take action to close gaps everywhere and ensure that essential sexual reproductive health services, family planning services continue even if health systems are, are strained. Uh, the services are life-saving and cannot wait, and delay in these services badly impact the health and well-being of women and girls and consequences last a lifetime. Let's work together and stand up for the rights and choice of women and girls. Uh, women must be empowered educationally, economically, and politically to exercise choices uh, uh, so, uh, when it comes to their uh, fertility uh, and uh, family planning and reproductive rights. I would like to close by thanking all partners, uh, 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 Minister of National Health Service Regulation Coordination, Minister of Planning, Planning Commission, National Disaster Management Authority, and all other, other national counterparts, key national counterparts, the World Health Organization, uh, uh, for making, uh, I mean, for uh, attending this event, for, for making this event a reality uh, on the occasion of the World Population Day. Bohat uh, Shukriya, thank you very much. From the Planning Commission, my colleague, UNFPA representative in Pakistan, most distinguished, most esteemed, and most respected guests, colleagues and friends, ladies and gentlemen, I am deeply honored, truly humble, and absolutely delighted to join you today for the commemoration of World Population Day 2021. The day is observed each year since over three decades with the aim of increasing awareness on various population issues such as the importance of family planning, gender equality, poverty, maternal and newborn health, and human rights. The global population reached 7 billion mark in 2011 and today it stands around 7.7 .7 billion and expected to grow to around 8.5 billion in 2030. This dramatic growth has been driven largely by increasing life expectancy accompanied with major ch changes in fertility rates, increasing urbanization and accelerating migration. These trends will have extensive implications for the future due to affecting economic development, employment opportunities, income distribution, poverty levels, and social protection. A first to ensure universal access to health care education, housing, sanitation, water, food, and energy also will be largely affected due to this. Ladies and gentlemen, the theme for World Population Day this year is right and choices are the answer. This theme is much more relevant now as the world is facing the COVID-19 pandemic that has compromised healthcare systems, particularly in the areas of sexual and reproductive health. COVID-19 has also exposed and aggravated the existing weaknesses of healthcare systems in low-income countries facing protracted challenges of governance, financing, iniquity, and accountability. At this point, I would like to mention, as already mentioned by my colleague, the response by the government of Pakistan to COVID-19 is very comprehensive and unified. I think we need to applaud the response by the government of Pakistan. The Director General WHO has highlighted seven countries after the first wave which have responded extremely well to COVID-19 pandemic and Pakistan was top in the list. So we must appreciate that. <laughs> Distinguished colleagues, we should bear in mind that population density in urban areas, household size 
and the aging population contribute to more vulnerability to pandemics like COVID-19. Pakistan is now the fifth large population in the world and with the current trends, the population will close to almost double by 2015, which is a really a, a concern. What is even more alarming is that the urbanization in Pakistan is growing at an annual rate of 3%, which is the highest growth rate in South Asia. The United Nations Population Division estimate that by 2025, nearly half of the country's population will live in urban areas, looming in the associated crisis of unemployment, as already we are aware, illiteracy, poverty, food and water scarcity, and many more. WHO deeply appreciate the initiatives of the government of Pakistan in solving this problem, such as providing every child equal opportunity of getting an education until high school, creating universal health coverage with a focus on sexual and reproductive health. This is another point I would like to highlight. The recent development in Pakistan when it comes to universal health coverage, the formulation of USC benefit package using DCP3 tool is another amazing example. I think Pakistan is writing history in this. This is the first country came out with the universal health coverage benefit package using DCP3 tool. And government and the highest level political commitment is there to implement this to ensure universal health coverage which ensure the access to healthcare services in time to come. WHO really appreciate all these initiatives by the government. And it is very important to highlight that we need to focus on standardizing the in-service and pre-service training packages on family planning, where WHO is much working on this with the government, strengthening knowledge and skills of healthcare providers on these issues, advocating promotion of sexual and reproductive health and rights, integrating key sexual and reproductive health interventions in the USC benefit package, as I said, is an integrated service delivery at the primary health care level, which is the way forward, supporting its implementation in current 12 priority districts, which WHO has much involved governments and also the federal government. I am confident that the growing momentum and the government's commitment towards addressing population issues in the country is the foundation of a prosperous Pakistan in near future. Each one of you, whatever the target you want to achieve, I am sure that all of you together will put your efforts together with selfless devotion. I am sure the targets we have set up by the government of Pakistan in this great endeavor will be achieved without any issue. I wish you a great discussion today and have a nice day. I stop here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sir Faraz, Member of the Social Sector. Uh, she is uh, request Pakistan, Madam Chair. On our environment and on our eco economy. Please, Madam, come to the stage. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Saladin. Growth on environment and resources, and uh, the previous. Thank you very much, Mrs. Hazarin. I think that the gravity and the gravity of the gravity has been a little bit more and that the people who are in the past will also talk about it. I will do a lot of different things. One is that there is no doubt that the people who are in the past and who are in the past will not be able to do it. There will be no proportion to it. تو ہم مسائل کا ہی شکار رہیں گے جو بھی ترقی ہم کرتے ہیں چاہے تعلیم میں چاہے فور پروڈکشن میں چاہے کسی اور ریسورس کو جنریٹ کرنے میں پانی کو کنزرو کرنے میں اوورال نیوٹریشن کو بہتر کرنے میں وہ کھائی جاتی ہے اضافی آبادی کے ساتھ 
اور یہ پیچیدہ مسئلہ ہے یہ صرف کسی ایک چیز کو حل کرنے کا مسئلہ نہیں ہے اس میں اس چیز کو ہم اگر واضح طور پہ سوٹ کرنا چاہتے ہیں اس میں کامیابی چاہتے ہیں تو کسی ایک چیز کے پیچھے پڑھ کے یہ کسی ایک معاملے کو حل کر کے یہ نہیں ہوگی آپ نے ڈاکٹر محبوب الحق کو کوٹ کیا بڑا آج سنچرانوے کی کوٹیشن ہے لیکن میرے خلال سے آج بھی وہ انتہائی ویلے ہیں اب چند ایسی چیزیں ہیں جو ہمارے سامنے ہیں جو واضح ہیں جن کو اگر ایڈریس کیا جائے جن کی اوپر اگر توجہ دی جائے تو ہم اپنی آبادی کی صرف تعداد کی نہیں بات کر رہا اس کی بہبوب ایک تعلیم یافتہ صحت مند خوش اور اپنے معاشرے میں کانٹریبیوٹ کرنے والی پاپولیشن جو ہے اس کو اچیب ہم کر سکتے ہیں اور اس کو کرنے کا کچھ راستے ہیں جو کہ جو میرے سے پہلے سپیکرز ہیں انہوں نے اس کو بڑے واضح طور پر ایڈینٹیفائی بھی کر دیا ایک کا تعلق تو بہتر تعلیم اور صحت کی سہولیات ہے یہ خود بخود اپنا اثر دکھاتی ہیں اور دنیا جہان میں دیکھا گیا کہ جہاں بچیوں کی تعلیم پر توجہ دی جائے تو ایک تو یہ ہے کہ معاشرے کی صحت اس کی نشو نما اور جو اگلی جنریشن ہے جو اگلی پود ہے ان کی اوورال بہتری میں وہ مدد ڈالتی ہے اور خود بخود جب انفرنٹ مورٹیلٹی یعنی نزائدہ بچے جو ہیں ان کی امواد کی شرح کم ہوتی ہے تو خود بخود جو ہے اس کے دوسرے اثرات آپ کے سامنے آنے شروع ہوتے ہیں انسان انیڈورٹنڈلی بغیر اس کو جانے بغیر سوچے جو فرٹیلٹی ریٹ ہے وہ ڈیپینڈ کرتا ہے سروائیول پر جب ایک ایوریج بچہ اس کا سروائیول بہتر ہونا شروع ہو جاتا ہے تو خود بخود جو ہے فرٹیلٹی ریٹ بھی بہتر ہونا شروع ہوتا ہے اس کا یہ مطلب ہرگز نہیں کہ ہم وہ تمام چیزیں جو ہمارے سامنے ہیں جو آنمیٹ نیٹ بھی ہے اور جو ایک ضرورت بھی ہے اس کو نظر انداز کریں وہ بالکل ساتھ ساتھ چیز چلتی رہتی ہے لیکن ہم نے سوچنا یہ ہے کہ اگر اس کو ہم نے ایک سسٹینیبل طریقے سے آگے لے کے جانا ہے تو ہمیں جو انویسمنٹ ہے اپنی بچیوں کی تعلیم اور ان کی بہتری میں اور اپنی عوام کی جنرل عوام کی صحت اور بہبود میں اگر ہم وہ نہیں کریں گے تو پھر جو سلوشن ہے وہ سسٹینیبل نہیں ہوں گے ہم اسی حال میں پھر سے دس سال بعد بیٹھے ہوں گے اور ہمارے جو فرٹیلٹی ریٹ ہیں اور جو کانٹرسیپٹیو یوز ریٹ ہے وہ گرا رہے گا تو میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ اگر اس کو ہم اسی انداز سے دیکھا جائے جیسے کہ دونوں ڈاکٹر صاحبان جو بڑی انتہائی پڑی لکھی اور باریک بین گفتگو بتائی اس سے پہلے ان تمام چیزوں کو اگر مد نظر رکھا جائے تو ہم شاید کسی بہتر صورتحال میں آ سکیں اس میں ایک چیز کی ضرورت ضرور ہے وہ یہ ہے کہ فوکس ہم بہت سی چیزیں کرتے ہیں یہ عالمی دن آتا ہے اس کو منع بھی لیتے ہیں یا بیٹھ بھی جاتے ہیں لیکن اگر ہم اس کو اس کی جو انڈر پننگ ہے ہم اس کو فنڈ نہیں کرتے اس کی اوپر ضروری وسائل نہیں ڈالتے تو پھر وہ چیز گفتگو کی حد تک رہ جاتی ہے اور اس سے آگے نہیں بڑھتی چنانچہ ہماری کوشش ہے کہ اس سال اور آئندہ آنے والے سالوں میں پاپولیشن ویل فیر کے لیے جو بھی ریسورسز ہم نے اکٹھی کرنی ہیں یا ان کی طرف ان کو بروے کار لانا ہے ان کو کیا جائے اور ساتھ ساتھ وہ جو ہولیسٹک جو ایک معاشرے کی اوورال بہتری جس میں بات پھر پھر سے میں دورا دیتا ہوں شاید آپ کے کان پک جائیں یہ بات سنگے لیکن معاشرے کی بہبود اور اس میں فیمیل لیٹرسی کا تعلیم کا امپاورمنٹ کا بہت زیادہ عمل دخل ہے اگر اس میں ہم انویسٹ کرنا شروع کر دیں تو خود بخود یہ باقی چیزیں بھی بہتر ہو جائیں گے آپ کی توجہ کے شکریہ اور میں معذرت چاہتا ہوں کہ میں محفل کے بیچ میں آکے بول رہا ہوں اور اس کے بعد ہم مجھے جانا ہے لیکن اتفاق سے ایک اور انتہائی اہم اور ضروری ٹاپک ہے جس کے بارے میں ایک اور تقریب ہے جہاں پہنچنا ضروری ہے تو آپ کی توجہ کا شکریہ آپ کی آمد کا شکریہ اور میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ یہ کم از کم اس چیز کو ہائلائٹ کرنے کے بعد پھر اس کے اوپر اگر ایکشن شروع ہو جائے تو ہم اس میں کامیابی حاصل کرنے میں بہت شکریہ بہت بہت شکریہ سر سر کافی ہماری ڈسکشن سیریس ہو گئی ہے تو سر ایف یو بیبل اللہو می کیا ہم ایک قبلہ یاس صاحب کے سپیچ سے پہلے ہم لوگ ایک ڈاکیمنٹری بنائی ہوئی
پاکستان کے دو انتہائی سمندہ مسائل ہیں جو جو ہماری آبادی بڑھ رہی ہے اس کے ساتھ ان دو مسائل کی وجہ سے لوگوں کا میرے زندگی نیچے تو رزلٹ یہ ہے کہ غربت کا ایک ایسا سائیکل بنتا ہے تو نئی نسل کو اس قابل نہیں کر رہا تو وہ آگے بڑھ کے پاکستان کے لیے پروگریسو ورک فورس کے طور پہ ایمرج ہو بچوں کی تعداد اتنی ہی رہی جن کو آپ سیکنڈ خوراک جدید معیاری تعلیم اور باعزت طرز زندگی دیتے ہیں دور دیشی کی خوشحالی کا راز آبادی کم ترقی دے جاتا کہیں ایسا تو نہیں کہ ہم اپنے گرد گرد اتنا حجوم بنا رہے ہیں کہ زندہ رہنے کے وسائل بھی کم پڑ گئے اور اگر ہم وسائل سے بھی آپ دو بیٹھے تو آپ یہ کیسے بڑھیں گے آخر کب تک یہ زمین تر پائے گی ہماری ضرورتوں کے پڑھتے ہوئے پوچھ کو جس کا پار ہم تناظر سے حافظ پر سوار ہے اس کے وسائل اور اس کی سہولتیں ہمارے لیے ناکافی ہوتی جا رہی ہیں
ونسلم على رسوله الكريم وأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Very Honorable Dr. Atawreman, Additional Secretary, Health. Bukhtiyar Sahib, Excellency, many other distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, great moment for me to share with you some findings on how ulama our religious sector can become change agent on the new narrative of population welfare. We need to go history why the concept of population planning, population welfare, failed to utilize influence of ulama, religious circle, in promoting the efforts for betterment of the population and trying to transfer a safer word to the coming generations. Because in the very beginning, during President Ayub era, the words which were used for the concept were tantamount to Urdu and Arabic to Zapte Viladar. Zapte Tawleed in stopping children, stopping babies. Of course, these terminologies were very provocative for the religious circles. And in the history, in 1960s, the decade of 60, we saw greater opposition from all circles of religious community. Maulana Mufti Muhammad Shafi, the greatest scholar of the time in the 60s, Maulana Mufti Mahmood, who was member of parliament at that time, Maulana Ghulam Ghaus Hazarvi, member at that time, and Malana Abulala Mududi, all different denominations rejected the idea of Zabti Waladat and Zabti Tori. And this indeed caused great damage to the original concept of how to work for the welfare of the coming generations and trying to transform our new born country into a country which is healthy, not only from population side, but in economy and in the global arena as well. But then with the passage of time, new concepts and new terminologies emerged like spacing, 
mother child health these concepts were then very agreeable for the religious community and the ulama and religious community they supported the concept of spacing the concept of mother child health because in the roots of islamic sharia the jurisprudence the health of mother is very important to the extent that the one of the greatest medieval jurist and scholar imam ghazali has addressed even the physique and outward appearance of the wife that for that purpose even the spacing is important and allowed and at certain stage it becomes compulsory when there is the question of the health of the mother the new narrative tawazun balancing population has been widely accepted by the religious community and this is a very encouraging and good sign because in a country like pakistan we cannot ignore the ulama the khutaba member of mihrab and we cannot promote ideas like this without their support so when the new narrative is widely accepted by the religious elements now it is time for the health department for unfpa population council and other organizations which are working on this task to bring ulama on board and i am very glad that council of islamic ideology and the iwan sadr are closely working on how to ensure support of the member of mihrab for this purpose in a recent engagement at the iwan sadr the research wing of the council of islamic ideology prepared a comprehensive note on how to go ahead with this concept and in the long run to reflect the recommendations in the policy council of islamic ideology has recommended that another very effective method for the population welfare and for the population management there is a need that funds and budget of the country should be diverted to rural education and particularly focusing on the female education because an educated girl will be better and well informed to opt for better choices or better options what should be the number of the family and how the kids and then you know making them growing and contributing to a society with youth which is skillful learned and educated the second proposal that we have submitted to the iwan sadd for consideration by the relevant budgetary policy makers is that in pakistan unfortunately 
we have very little spaces and centers for entertainment. There are no parks, good parks. There are no lawns. There are no recreation places. Even in our federal capital, if you want to go on a picnic, on spending some leisure time with your family, you have very limited choices. So when there are no opportunities for entertaining your kids, your family, so people resort because, you know, it is a natural process to stay put, to stay at home. If there are these opportunities, the Council of Islamic Ideology believes that with the passage of time, it will definitely contribute to better population management and to better population welfare. We understand that the concept of bigger population has a root in history and in our tribal societies as the societies used to be. But then with the new paradigm shift that it is not the number of the people, population, which gives you identity and power. It is the skill and the political influence and particularly the economy if you are part of the generating new ideas and new concepts, making people skillful. That actually provides you a better space in the global brotherhood of the nations. These are things which the organizations working on the population welfare need to take to the religious circle, the ulama, and particularly we need to concentrate on the women empowerment. Because in the present situation, there are opportunities in which the women do not need to come to the markets or to the industry. There is this concept of outsourcing that the industry would come to your home, that the marketplace will come to your home, and you will be able to take all cultural and religious observations and having contributed to the empowerment concept, empowerment of women. So these are new opportunities that the post-globalized world has provided us with and it is high time that we work together and try to bequeath a strong and prosperous Pakistan to our coming generations. Council of Islamic Ideology has also come up with a recommendation on the minor age marriages. And Council of Islamic Ideology is of the opinion that law will not be effective in this area. What is important is to bring member of Mehrab on board and to make them part of the awareness campaign about the negative fallout of the minor age, minor age marriages. So if all these happen in a coherent manner, we are hopeful that things would be better, insha'Allah. With these words, I conclude. And once again, 
I express my deepest sense of gratitude for those who invited me to be part of this uh, very distinguished gathering and to share with you the role and contribution of the Council of Islamic Ideology and the religious circles. I thank you very much indeed.